uh, BJ and I are here, and can you stop and get some white gloves? And he was like, what, bro? It's for me to clean the gun. I ain't walking into no ditty party. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna react to the first 25 videos that I did, and I think I'm gonna continue to do this. You know, maybe every 25 videos or so, talk about what I was thinking and you know what happened, what was the thought process, why I made the video, my thoughts on it, all the backstory because I think it'll give a good opportunity for you to see stuff that maybe you haven't seen yet. And you know, people get in the comments when I release a video and they're like, oh, you could have talked about this, you could have talked about that. And it's like, yeah, I could have. And then the video would have been an hour and a half long, you know, talking about grip or something so I try to keep everything a little bit shorter roughly 10 minutes or so and I just can't get everything in that but most people click off a video after the first 60 seconds or so anyway so I think this is going to be cool just chill out grab something to drink let's check out the first video that I did which is welcome to Austin trainings what's up guys I'm Jared Romine and this is the first video from Awesome Training's YouTube channel. I'm briefly going to go over some background about me, why I made the channel, and what to expect. That quality is like dismal compared to what we're working with now. But uh, yeah, this video, it's it's pretty basic. I'm just introducing who I am and you know why I started a YouTube channel. I have a barber named Rodney, and I told Rodney that I was going to do Instagram and TikTok. This was after I got out of selling cars and I was like, man, I'm just going to start uh, Instagram and TikTok to help gain more clients because I was teaching privately just my own personal business. And he was like, you're going to YouTube? I was like, nah, man, that's too much work. And he stopped cutting my hair and he was like, nah, man, you got to. You got to. He said it twice. So I thought about it and did research for six months before even making this first video. So... Sometimes you just got to jump in, man. Let's go check out the next one. What up, everybody? Young Romine here with Awesome Trainers. We're going to talk about the four rules of gun safety today. I think everybody should know these four rules. I always tell people, if you break one rule, you're on thin ice with hot skates. If you break two, something bad's going to happen. So this was out in Shelbyville, Tennessee. A friend of mine, this was on her property. So, uh, you know, we were out here in the mosquitoes. We had a, a a little mosquito repellent device that would just fog the whole land because it was it was pretty insane. It was pretty insane when we were driving out there to film it. It was just just mosquitoes everywhere. Look apocalyptic. So, uh, yeah, we did a lot of videos out here initially because I didn't have to pay for range time or anything and I could just wax eloquently and freely but uh, go check that out it's four rules of gun safety I tell everybody doesn't matter who I'm working with I've worked with you know thousands of people at this point uh, army rangers uh, regular dudes you know retired police officers nurses trauma ER people it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from the first time we work together when we sit down I'm going to tell you about the four rules of gun safety just to make sure we're all on the same page. You never break those four rules. Nothing bad ever happens. What do you know? So let's check out the second one or the third one. What up guys? Young Romine here. Austin training. <laughs> Young Romine here. There's a lot of talk about. I didn't realize that I'd, I intro my videos with Young Romine here so much. That's great. Semi-autos. And if you look at the news, Let's jump ahead. For any length of time, you're going to spend, you know, good money for the gun. You'll probably cry, but gun is clear. Checks are always free. It never hurts to check your gun. Check never hurts to check your gun. I say that all the time. Checks are free. It takes you like one second, literally one second to fully check your gun. If you don't check your gun, something bad could happen. If you take that one second to check your gun then you're safe and you stay out of jail and nobody dies. So uh, this video uh, was getting a little bit later, but I wanted to talk about 
what is a semi-auto handgun? Semi-auto, the auto part means auto loading. So people think, oh, it's a full automatic and it just goes and everybody dies. And that's not true, man. You got to press the trigger. The gun's going to cycle and then you got to let your finger off the trigger and then press it again. So go check out that video and let's go to the next one. What up? Romine here. Young Romine here. Today we're talking about the AR-15, the dreaded AR-15. Oh my God. So there's a there's a part here. I'm gonna try to find it. Yeah, this is my favorite part right here. Automatic, just like the handgun. AR doesn't stand for assault rifle. That's some gobbledygook meant to mislead people. It stands for Armalite Rifle. So, an AR-15. Basically, it's the style. Like an SUV, you got Jeeps, Forerunners, you know, Range Rovers. That's the overall body style of the gun. Um, the Armalite Rifle is the overall ergonomic style. It's like adult Legos. So, uh, I really wanted to make this too. And we're still out in Shelbyville. I think I'm out in Shelbyville for quite a few videos. So... Go watch that. I just give basic, super basics of the AR-15. And, oh yeah, this one, this next one. The gun debate has become an increasingly volatile topic. Is the number one thing everyone gets wrong about the gun debate. So, you don't have to engage with the stupidity of people when talking about guns. And I've, I've talked with enough people about guns to understand that if you don't set up some type of foundation, then the conversation just you know, degrades into, oh, guns are bad, guns kill people. So in this video, you know, let's, let's see how many views this has. 887 views is five minutes long. Nobody's watching it. In this video, I talk about how to set up the argument for anything if you're talking to you know somebody who's anti-gun before we even get in the weeds we want to set the conversation up a certain way so it doesn't degrade into you just blaming an inanimate object for no reason when you know a gun can sit on the table and it's not going to kill anybody it's not just going to jump up and you know shoot people at random and you know load itself stuff like that so this is a very important video you know i think it was what Maybe the fifth video here on the list. Yep, fifth video, but it's very important. So go watch that one, especially if you're talking to people about guns and you're trying to, you know, educate them on uh, gun statistics and stuff like that. So let's hit the next one, debunking high capacity magazines. We need to ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. No, 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 no. Hey, in this video, uh, there's a guy who I know named Evan. He's the third strongest man in the world. And he, he saw the video. He was like, bro, what happened to your eyebrows? I don't know, man. It was just, it was just lighting. It just weird lighting. This is actually in my, uh, in my living room. So it's crazy to see how the, the quality is so you know poor so to speak it's, it's not bad but it's just not what we're working with you know today but this is a video just me talking about high capacity magazines a lot of ideas for videos come from me talking with clients because they'll ask me questions and then i'll answer the questions be like oh that's a good idea for a video so let me talk about that so I always try to do as much research as I can before I get on here and talk with authority about stuff just to be responsible and not spread misinformation, uh, but also because I don't like talking about things where I'm incorrect. So if I don't know something, I'm just gonna tell you I don't know. All right, let's move to the next one. What up guys, Romine here, Austin Trainings. We're gonna make a playlist. We're gonna make, yep. So this playlist is the seven fundamentals of shooting. I think this is pretty solid. I could have gone into depth. I'm just gonna scroll through these. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. So we got how to stand when shooting, 
how to grip a handgun, sight alignment explained, trigger press in detail, sight picture for iron sights, because uh, your sight picture is going to be different if you have a red dot, how to breathe when shooting, and follow through explain. So we we're out in Shelbyville yet again. Let me just throw another one of these up here the trigger press. All right, welcome back. So uh, we wanted to uh, film it all in one go because I wanted people to see it moment to moment. Uh, so we were just out there for maybe, I don't know, maybe nine hours filming all seven of these videos. Uh, but I think this is good. This is good for beginners. I think this is good for uh, for people who are you know intermediate and just want to refresh. It always helps to hear stuff differently. Like I did jujitsu for six years, and I remember uh, my instructor Mike. Shout out to uh, Mike. He was teaching me how to do the wrist lock and how to throw somebody, and I really struggled with that the first year. And then this guy named Kevin came from Arkansas and he was like, Jared, what are you doing? Just make a circle. Now Mike had been telling me to make circles with my hands. You know, hold on, let me put it on full screen. Mike had been telling me to do circles with my hands the whole time, that whole year. And as soon as uh, Kevin told me, I was like, oh, circles. So there was a guy named Roger, shout out to Roger. He's a seventh or eighth degree black belt in uh, Taekwondo and black belt and some other stuff too. Roger's bigger than me and he grabbed me and I did the circle and, and threw him and it was smooth and it felt good. I was like, hey, Mike, 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 circles. That's all I got to do. And then Mike was like, oh, yeah, well, I've been telling you that for a year. So uh, sometimes you just want to hear stuff from somebody else. So you can learn from a lot of instructors out here, but it would behoove you to watch all seven of these videos just to get a different perspective. Stuff might click differently. So we're going to move on. I'm not going to hit all seven of these. We're going to move on to the next ones. All right, episode 14. Simply have fun with their kids. Look at that. Oh, it's awesome. Kids shooting guns. Responsibly. What you just watched are kids being responsible, safe, and proficient with firearms. Man, that's crazy. Who would have thought you could teach your kid how to use a firearm responsibly and they'll be okay. That's why I, I made this video um, I get a lot, a lot of families that come in and it's a good thing because the families come in to work with me and they're like, Hey, you know, we don't know anything and we wanted to learn, but we figured it'd be best to learn as a family. So, um, everybody's on the same page when it comes to safety, because everybody needs to know how to be safe with the gun. And I teach little Johnny or, or little Susie. I've taught kids as young as 10. I've taught a lot of kids in that 10 to 13 range, uh, 10 to 13 years old. And you know, what's crazy is once you teach the gun, the kids about gun safety, they don't care anymore. They legit don't care. Like I remember teaching, I think it was like a 12 year old boy and his, uh, his family. And then as soon, we weren't even off the range yet. We were walking off the range and the 12 year old boy was like, daddy, can we go get some ice cream? Like he was so done. He was like, okay, yeah, I, I know how to shoot. And yeah, this is great, uh, ice cream and uh, Fortnite. Yeah, let's go, that's what I wanna do. So it would behoove you again to teach your children about firearms just because you teach them about gun safety doesn't mean they're gonna run out here and shoot up a school. That's not how life works and that's not how people work. Next one, my time in North Nashville. What's up guys? Roman, so this one, here. 
this one is a. Uh, this one's really important because my grandma, my grandmother on my mom's side used to uh, live there in North Nashville, and we would always get together. And I tell this story about how I witnessed the shootout when I was nine years old, and uh, you know, it it had a, it affected everybody differently. I even have a cousin named Lance, and uh, Lance has a, a rap career that he's starting, and he did a song about you know, what he experienced from his perspective that day. And it just goes to show that, you know, no matter what type of tool is around or not around, if somebody wants to commit serious bodily injury or, you know, try to take the life of someone else, they're going to try to do it. And I explain that in this video. This is a really, uh, really close to home video that I like a lot. And at the end, yeah, there's me and my cousins, and we'd always hang out there. I like this intro. I'm going to play this intro real the quick. Aunts, uncles, cousins. Oh, the outro. We'd always Excuse come me. over and we'd eat together. Uh, but one and women. Love and miss you, nanny. Yeah. All right, next one is why you should train three to five yards. So let's get to it here. 70 yards away and you engage and say that that person was a threat. You might have some explaining to do in court where they ask, you know, why didn't you just run away? Why didn't you just call 911? Yeah, why didn't you? So... You know, man, people misunderstand stuff and, you know, a lot of people can't read, so I don't care. But I'm talking about why you should train three to five yards. It's important because I work with a lot of people. I've worked with some people who you would think, you know, oh, yeah, they know how to shoot. They can't hold a fist size grouping at five yards. So if you can't hold a fist size grouping at five yards in an air conditioned environment, taking all the time in the world to... You know, get your grip together, see your sights, press the trigger without moving the gun. What type of accuracy do you think you're going to have when your heart falls through the floor and you're moving and it's all you can do to get the gun up and, and defend yourself? Like, you're, you're going to miss. And, you know, people say every bullet has an attorney attached to it. You're going to be held accountable for every round you shoot. So it's really important to establish fundamentals up close first at three yards and five yards. If you can't do it at those distances, then you definitely can't do it at 10, 15, 20, 25. So I really like this at the end. You know, why didn't you just leave and remove yourself? Got some drills here. More drills. One handed. I remember seeing a uh, a comment where the guy was like, why is your pinky off of the gun? And if you look at the video about grip, I talk about how uh, the grip is more so with these fingers because I got my trigger finger here and I'm mostly gripping here and you don't really need your pinky. Like, of course it's resting on the frame of the gun, but you don't really need it. So when I'm shooting left-handed, I'm focusing more here. So I just don't need it, that's why it was off. But when I did these drills, this was to show you that you can do this and kind of like move around in your bay and get a little bit more action instead of just standing there. Because I work with people who you know, they've been shooting for 20 years and they're, you know, pretty decent shooters. But once we start incorporating movement, they're like, oh my gosh, it's kind of like they have to rethink how to, how to move because they've been standing still in a bay for so long. It's like, man, you can still move around in your bay. And the speed at which I did it is the speed at which you should try to get to, because I think that's a good foundational speed to be able to do it. I wasn't just trying to burn stuff down and run and gun. I'm doing it thinking, 
yeah, if I was standing right next to you, I would try to build you up to be able to do it at this speed, at this consistency first before we start, you know, getting into some John Wick. All right, episode 17. What's up, guys? I just wanted to reach out to you all real quick before you watch the video. I had to give this little disclaimer this video, here t- um, just to let y'all know I'm not an attorney. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to give you any legal advice, bro. You're on your own. Go go pay some attorney 100 bucks an hour to hear him talk. Uh, but I, I can tell you how I would interact with police if I was involved in a self-defense shooting. So, you know, I'm not giving legal advice on that, but I wanted to give this disclaimer. I know there's a lot of stuff out there about all these self-defense insurance companies and are they going to actually cover you? Are they not going to cover you? I mean, I hear it. I'm outside. I know what's going on. So I'm going to have a video on that coming later, but I just wanted to touch on it here. So I do that little intro video. And then this part, if you look here with me talking for the rest of your life. Someone ran up on me and tried to do violent things. You've called 911. They're sending really second responders because you've already responded to the threat. Yeah, you see that? I'm actually at Centennial Park. So uh, if you know anything about Nashville, that's where I was. My uh, videographer and I, we went to Centennial Park and just like where can we film this and not have a bunch of people running around and cutting in front of the camera right there was great. And I was like, oh yeah, let me walk down the steps and be dramatic. So that was fun to make. Let's go to the next one. Oh yeah. Hey, look. Young Romine here with Austin Trainings. Got a buddy of mine with me today. Mahari. Hey, My name is Mahari. Dog, Mahari's the man. Mahari's the man. Uh, I met Mahari at another gun range here in Nashville, Tennessee, and we just got we just got cool immediately. He's super cool. That's bro right there. Mahari is a uh, is a cool guy, and he knows his stuff. Mahari, I go by SK Reaper on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna talk about concealed carry. What is it? What are the parameters when people talk about concealed carry? What do they mean? I already know there are a lot of videos, but we're talking about it now. So yeah, I, give you everything I you said, know. I know there are a lot of videos out there, but we're talking about it now. So um, I think that if you are concealed carrying, you definitely need to watch this video because we touch on a lot of stuff. It's a lot of good stuff. It's even good for me, like me teaching y'all helps me too, because it just solidifies the information in me even more so I can operate with even more responsibility and knowledge going forward as a law-abiding citizen. But yeah, Mahari's legit and Mahari and I've been talking, he's gonna he's gonna be back in town soon, he moved. And uh, so he's not in Nashville anymore, but he's gonna be coming back in town and we're gonna film a lot of videos. So if you like Mahari, you're definitely gonna see more of Mahari and I'm looking forward to that. We got some really good ideas coming. So let's go to the next one. All right, so this is just us shooting. I really like this part, hold on. Comes in right on beat, I like that, that's hard. I like that. So, all right, how this worked out was, let me let me go back, let me go back some, hold on. All right, so we were like, all right, we're just going to shoot. We just wanted to have, I have these little intermission videos where it's like, man, you know, I want to give my editor, Caden, a little bit of a break and not have anything heavy to to edit. So we just do some light shooting videos and then that gives Steven and I, my videographer, more time to film other videos. So we just have these shooting videos as kind of intermissions. And when we were doing this, we were like, uh, Mahari and I were like, what you wanna shoot? What, what you wanna shoot and what do you wanna do? So I was like, hey man, how about you just go first and, and do your thing? So I was standing back. Uh, my videographer, Hatice, was standing next to me and we were watching this. <laughs> and it does not,
it doesn't do it justice uh, because as Mahari was shooting like you didn't even see a whole lot of stuff because you know we we chop it down but as Mahari was shooting I leaned over to it so I was like dang he's tactical in the mother you know like I was like bro you got sound effects coming off of you like I could have swore when he started moving it was like whoosh, like he's Mahari's the man bro Mahari's my dude shout out to Mahari that was a lot of fun and then we were talking about uh about Chief Keith because he said I will give you mine but I'm 300 right now uh huh 300 300 blackout uh -oh. <laughs> man I thought you were talking about Chief Keith <laughs> <laughs> You saw that interview where they were like, so how old are you? He was like, I'm 300. He was like 15. He was like, I'm 300. <laughs> how old so are you? how old are you? 300. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go watch that. Go watch those intermission videos. They're a lot of fun. We're just chilling. We're not trying to be super tactical. We're just shooting and having fun. All right, so episode 20 right here. Um, a lot of people don't know, but I filmed 20 videos before I started releasing any videos because I wanted to make sure that I was even going to commit to it. I was like, man, I might film some videos and be like, man, I'm, I'm good on this. I don't like being in front of the camera. And it was a little weird at first, but around episode, you know, 16, 17, I felt like I was getting more comfortable in front of the camera. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do this. So I was like, I'm gonna commit to making 20 videos first and see how I feel after making 20, which this is episode 20. I was like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I wanted to have a more serious video uh, with a whole lot of data and information and kind of have more range, show more range uh, in the video. And then after filming this video, I was like, all right, I actually want to continue doing this. So then we released episode one after filming this video. So I was already ahead of the game by 20, but this is a... People who decide to murder children are the worst types of human beings. Everyone is equally appalled and disgusted when hearing about yet another mass murder at a school. So this is a video about school shootings and I solved it. I solved it, bro. You know, I don't care. I don't care. I studied it for three months. Um, I worked on it when I was in Seattle. I worked on it when I was in Tampa. I worked on it when I came back home to Nashville. Like I really got in the weeds on all of this. And this video legit could have been four hours long, but I wanted to you know, chop it down so you would actually watch it. But the solutions are already there. It's already there, man. Like everybody gets caught up on, oh, well, you know, we should just ban guns. Banning guns doesn't do anything because people are still, you know, removing people in countries where uh, citizens can't have guns. And it's a multifaceted issue. It's not just mental health. It's not just guns. It's not just anything. It's several things. And I go into that in this video. It's definitely worth watching. This was our first attempt at, um, you know, more of a kind of documentary style uh, video, but it's definitely worth your time. My favorite part in this video is, these doors should automatically lock as well, and they should also need key card access to open the door. This I used to work here. Is common. I was at work. So common that a company can opt to use physical car. I sold software to banks at one point. So that was uh, Chris Shibley who, who filmed that for me. Shout out to Chris Shibley. All right, but my favorite part of the video is... Guardian program. Is it working? Absolutely. This right here. Does it work? Yes. How do you feel this the guy. school guardian program is working in our state? How many mass casualty active assailant events have we had on a school in Florida since Storm and Douglas? None. Pinellas County Man, I laughed so much County at that. Sheriff Grady Judd. Like every every video that you see, I've already watched it like 20 times myself just to look and make sure that everything's correct. 
And sometimes we still miss stuff because sometimes we're rushing. But when he was like, how many mass casualties? None. Like, I don't know. I just I cracked up at that. I thought it was funny. All right, next one. All right, this next one is knife, bat, or gun for home defense. And I made this one because I get so many people who... Uh, Everybody's talking about my shirt. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, I get so many people who are like, "Oh no, I'll just, you know, I'll just use a knife or I'll just use a bat." And like one guy, I told him, I was like, "Bro, you really ready to bash somebody's brains in? Like, are you you really about that life?" I don't, I don't think so, man. So I break that down here, and Caden did a really good job, in my mild yet humble and entirely accurate opinion of that intro. And uh, you see, I got my shirt off, so. Need a gun? Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about it today. So, I got my buddy with me, BJ. He's gonna be the bad guy in this scenario. So, um, I decided to take my shirt off because people can't take their shirt off. Yeah, I hit the gym and I was like, I'm gonna be out in this mug looking swole, and we were laughing the whole time and then the buddies that I work with uh, at the range they would put it up on the TV in the range and they'd be like look at this guy showing off the abs it was always you know it's funny but yeah and now I'm talking about light why you should use a light uh, I go through all the scenarios with the knife the bat and the gun and then at the end I really enjoyed this part the gun wins. It should not be hard for you to defend yourself. It should be easy. Like, subscribe, all that. I'll we'll see you on the next one. Romine. We laughed so much in this video. He was like, you know, the BJ's a big dude. You have to defend to that, Jared. I mean, just, you, know, you could have said lean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to BJ. It should not be easy for you to defend yourself. It should, it should not be lit. I just hope he didn't have any buddies. Okay. <laughs> of course he has buddies. <laughs> I don't even know how many takes we had of this. Of course he has friends. Who's going to run into a house by themselves? Especially Shout out to T. Stab. T and BJ. That was fun to make. That was really fun just running around being goofy. Y'all don't see all that because the video would have been two hours long. All right, next one. All right, so we're gonna do something a little bit different today, something a little fun. So this video is, can you reach your gun in time? Now, the idea behind this video was, once again, working with a lot of people, and they're like, oh, people are telling me I'm gonna lock up my gun like Fort Knox. I'm gonna put the magazine somewhere, I'm gonna put the gun somewhere else, I'm gonna lock both of them up, and I'm like, dog, you're tripping. You're, you're not gonna be able to get to it. So that's that was the, the catalyst for this video. And uh, this was actually right after, we filmed this right after the knife back gun video. I just put a shirt on and then we just kept it rolling. And I thought this was really cool, this was really fun. I know that you know people were like, oh well you're not gonna have the safe away from your bed like that. But it was just more fun to run to the safe. And people do talk about, oh, no, I'm going to put it away so nobody can see it, you know, in a closet or something. So we wanted to have some kind of distance to make it more fun for us to run to. But also, you know, there are people who do that. I know you're tactical, tactical keyboard warriors out there, and you know everything. But some people actually think this way. So I got to adhere to everybody. So uh, this was fun. Watch this video. We were... Like, I was dead set. Like, I didn't want anybody to open the locks when I was running. Like, this little part right here. One lock. Dang. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Hold All on. the manual locks that's are hard. hard. I'm not even. I did just skip a couple of locks, but still got a key for the other one. Dang. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's go, boys. I thought I was going to get this one. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> and T and I are really, really competitive. Like, really competitive. So, 
<laughs> when he rolled up on me, he was like, hey, buddy, you didn't even get a single one. Because <laughs> I was so determined. I thought I was going to get both the locks. And, you know, under just a little bit of stress, I just, I flubbed the locks. So I don't like any type of manual lock to get to my gun. I only want maybe a numeric keypad or like a biometric thumbprint. But let's go to the next one. Guys, oh go yeah. Before the video starts, I just why you need a carry permit state, right now? Carry permit class. Yeah. In the year of our Lord, my buddy Savior, Perry. Twenty-four. I had two. My buddy Perry filmed this this little intro uh, because I had just gotten audited by the state. The state came into one of my carry permit classes. It was two guys dressed in black, and when I showed up to open up the door. They were like, oh, uh, you can't come in yet. We're waiting on the instructor. I was like, I am the instructor. And then they're like, oh, okay, great. Well, uh, we're with the government. We're here to help. We're here to audit your class. And I was like, oh, man, I'm getting fired today. Like, I just, I got so nervous. Uh, but after it, they said, you know, you did a great job. Uh, but we want you to also add certain things into your class. So they told me a lot of things uh, that happen when people, you know, what they've been seeing as state officials what happens when people use their gun in self-defense legally and all the nonsense they have to go through even in the state of Tennessee, which is a red state and a you know relatively pro-gun state. So I decided to make this video and I still stand by you should get your carry permit. Do I want constitutional carry, like real constitutional carry? Yeah, like you should be able to just go buy a gun, put on your hip, walk outside, you know, you do your little background check or whatever. People think you don't do background checks, but you do. And then that should be fine in order for you to own a gun because it's your right. But then if you have to use your gun, it shouldn't come back to haunt you that you didn't have all this certification behind your name and the prosecutor makes some, you know, statement of, oh, well, you know, Johnny, uh, bought a gun, the gun's big and black, black things are scary, and he didn't even get a, a carry permit. You know, he just bought a gun because he was looking to kill. Like, it comes back to haunt you. If the DA is anti-gun, it's going to come back to haunt you. Uh, the state officials literally said uh, in my class that they were auditing, they were like, hey, class, everybody, you want to think of it this way. Go to Walmart and watch 12 people enter Walmart. Those are gonna be the 12 people on your jury if you have to shoot somebody in self-defense. So you need to make sure that your actions are reasonable because you're gonna be dealing with people who know nothing about guns. So it just helps to have a permit. 95% of people who have a permit look more favorable than people who don't. It is what it is. If you have a problem with, oh, a permit's an infringement on my right. Yeah, it is. So vote politicians in the office, get off the couch, don't talk about, oh man, my vote doesn't matter. Get off the couch and go vote for politicians who will actually represent you. That's all you gotta do, don't get mad at me. Oh, in the comments, oh, blah, 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 blah. you sound dumb, bro. How I clean my gun, uh-huh, it ain't how you clean your gun, this is how I clean my gun. Yeah, this Disclaimer, is- Disclaimer, I'm not liable for any nonsense that you do at home. This is how I do it but you're gonna to want to read your manual. Yeah, read your manual. The barrel. Uh, this is a video about just how to clean your gun. I didn't wanna go into a really in-depth video. Honestly, ma'am, I think the best video on how to clean your gun is um, like Glock's official cleaning guide. I forgot the name of the gentleman who does it. Caden will, will put it on the screen, but I think his video is the most legit it shows everything now you can't show as much so like per youtube's guidelines you can't take a gun apart on camera or they'll flag the video so his video shows all that because it was up uploaded previously so he goes through all the official steps and i kind of follow those steps glock's official uh recommendations but then once you get more comfortable with the gun you know what to look for you kind of you know cheat it a little bit here and there uh, just to save time. But yeah, you should watch this video. I just give a basic overview of how to clean because I just wanted to have that out there for people to look at, but I still often refer people to the other video about Glock's official cleaning guide for sure. Oh, and, and real quick. So you see I have white gloves on. 
So I usually have black gloves that I use that are way better. And I forgot to get them out of a certain bag and I left it in my other car. So uh, T, T and BJ were standing behind my videographer, Steven, watching me do this. Uh, but before we started filming, I called T. I was like, hey, man, you on your way? And he was like, yeah. I was like, all right, well, uh, BJ and I are here. And can you stop and get some white gloves? And he was like, what, bro? What you got going on, man? Whoa. Well, what y'all doing over there? I was like, it's, it's for me. It's for me to clean the gun. <laughs> it's like I ain't walking into no ditty party. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> the, the white gloves, the white gloves were to clean the gun. <laughs> was, <laughs> D was getting ready to turn around and go home, man. That was funny. So funny. We always have a good time when, when we're filming. And I'll have people typically, uh, you know, like my buddies and stuff around. When I'm filming, y'all just don't see it. All right, so this is the 25th one, and then we're going to stop it after this video. Okay, I'm talking about hearing protection. So when I'm at the range, people are like, oh, I'm good with just headphones. Or, oh, I'm good with just inner earphone. Mm-hmm. When you're No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, working at a gun range, I have to get my lead levels tested and my hearing tested uh, roughly every six months. And, you know, people lose their hearing being around loud guns. Your headphones aren't enough. And I've been around enough people to see, you know, people will be shooting and then the person next to me will be blinking every time the shot goes off because that, you know, that sound wave is hitting them in the head and that could potentially you know damage your hearing so i always recommend doubling up i don't care what the headphones are i don't care at all what the headphones are how you know highly rated they are any of that if i'm just coming to the range for recreational shooting or for training i'm doubling up i'm putting something in in my inner ear canal and headphones to save my hearing and i just got my hearing tested august 8th right now we're in September and uh they said wow your hearing's perfect where do you work again yeah and I was like that's because I, I double up I don't have any hearing loss and I've been shooting for years and I'm around it all day every day so double up save your hearing once it goes uh, you can't get it back but we're going to stop it there go check out these uh 25 videos it'll be cool we're going to do another one uh, with another set of 25 and uh, hope you guys learned a little bit of something see some insight into how we do things and the thought process behind some of these videos and i'll catch you on the next one like comment subscribe Roma.